Hello, thanks for coming back to my studio for another art lesson. This will be part two of my series of art lessons. Part one was scribble away your worries. And in part one, what we did is we spent some time scribbling about our feelings. And I shared my process of using scribbling and art making as a way to relieve my worries and feel less anxious. And also, as part of that, I put a lot of feeling onto some paper. So I created some pages, we created some pages filled with scribbles that have a lot of feeling to them. Today's lesson is gonna be about just taking that paper that's filled with scribbling, that has some personal meaning, and just finding ways to make that part of other pieces of artwork. So pretty simple. So the question we're asking is, how do we hold it all? If we have these worries and we have these scribbles to represent it, what do we do with that? So today, some materials we can use um, our scribble paper from the last lesson. And we'll do a little bit of kind of watercolor painting. So we have some brushes and some water. Um, I was thinking about using coffee grounds to paint with, uh, but I tried it on some brown background. It didn't quite show up enough for this project. Um, and then also we have some, you know, whatever drawing supplies you have around could be useful. A pair of scissors, something to tape or glue with. And today I'm going to use a paper bag as my canvas. So I'm just going to cut out a nice rectangle from some paper bag. And you can use anything uh, to draw on, any sort of paper. Uh, old folders are good, paper bags are great. I wanted a nice warm background to contrast with the crazy bright color scribbles. I'm going to take the scribble paper, I'm going to look at like finding some shapes in the scribbles that can kind of represent some of the worries and the feelings that are on there. And I tried doing this, drawing a pentagon with a pen, that's a five-sided shape. Um, then I decided like, okay, I couldn't see that so well. So I'm gonna use a Sharpie to go around those edges. And that's a nice simple shape. I think I'll add an extra line, give it a little bit more depth. It makes it almost look like it's three-dimensional with that extra line, a little bit more interesting. So you could do anything you want with that. I'm going to cut this shape out, and this is going to go onto a background. But first, I got to paint that background. So, okay, I made a funny sound. So I'm going to use a little acrylic paint. Uh, you could use watercolor. Acrylic paint with water acts a lot like watercolor. But I was thinking watercolor because a way to ease anxiety is to... Uh, to accept what we can't control. And I find watercolor, when you use a lot of water in painting, it's a little tough to control that. I'm gonna to try to go with that and use some materials that I'm not in much control of and let the water move it around and also let the brush do what it will. And let my hand do what it will. And let's try to get into a zone there. So I just got into, a, I just did some painting, did kind of like a lines across the page. And then I'm trying a little brown paint. I'm gonna make it kind of like a, a net sort of feeling. It's pretty abstract, but you can do this again, like while listening to music or even, you know, I like to listen to podcasts or you can listen to a book on tape. Maybe you have some reading to do and you can listen to a book on tape while you do some painting. Um, so I let the paint dry a bit. You know, I was making some other art. Uh, let the paint dry. And there's still some wet spots on there. So I'm just going to use some of the extra paper bag to blot that up and dry it off. 
And now I'm going to use just a ballpoint pen and just notice these patterns in here. I'm just going to look at these shapes that are totally abstract, that were kind of made by the water flowing around the page a bit. I'm going to outline those. You know, part of the accepting of what I can't control and just going with the flow. And that flow state, that's something really helpful now. You know, I'm not, it's not killing time, it's using it. Uh, if you get into a flow state, that's just when you're making art, you just get absorbed into the art and the time drifts by, but you're making something, you're creating something that you can feel good about. So I spent some time on this, just finding the details, letting the shapes emerge. This is just some art that just exists. And now I take that scribble that I cut out that before, Pentagon, this shape, and like, see, where does this want to be? Which way does it want to go? I use some glue. And I just glued it down and created a piece that can just sort of fit on the page. And that's, so this is an abstract art that it, maybe it means nothing, but it also means a lot is what I was feeling. I'm going to try another piece just using colored pencil, using some brown ba background again, another piece of that same paper bag. And what else can catch that anxiety is, yeah, maybe some spiral. Just do a little spiral drawing, and it's kind of a ripple. And that, it feels good. That's nice. I'll do a bunch of these spir spirals using these warm colors, a little red, a little pink. I'll fill up the page with that, and then, and then I'll color in. I made lots of other shapes by those scribbles overlapping. So now I'm coloring all that in, and it's creating a, a different abstract design. But it has that, it has that calming effect. This is this is a calm process, and that'll be a nice contrast for when I take some uh, my scribble and add it in there. All right, so I'll use this shape. We always have some jagged edges and some weird little triangles in it. And this time I'm going to, I'm going to, I'll tape it down. I'll use some scotch tape, which also has a nice shine to it, so you get a little texture. And you can experiment with all different ways of attaching one piece to another. You know, whatever materials you have around the house, you can use that. You can make art out of it, out of anything. I want to make sure it stays now. I'm going to tape it down the top. You tape it on the bottom. You know, if you tape it too tight, it bends the paper a little bit, which is also fine. I'll tape each side down, and I'm making the tape extra long because part of the art is that shininess of the tape. So this is being pretty random, pretty abstract, but I'm making some art out of that. So that's one way of doing abstract art using the scribbles and incorporating that and making some juxtaposition. Another way is I'm going to try using a uh, regular composition pad, which is something I learned from Linda Barry who is a genuine genius. And I'm going to start off using some pencil. And what I'm going to do is kind of a cartoon approach, you know, something also inspired by Linda Barry, and tell a little bit of a story you know, about one way that, you know, that I'm spending time now. And something I'm doing is cleaning. So I'm going to draw a picture of myself, cartoon picture, and I'm starting off with the shapes shapes in my body and you know I'm gonna use eraser and redo what I need to redo. I'm gonna look at my hand and look at my arm and notice the shapes of my body parts and notice the shape of the uh, of the vacuum cleaner that I use. And you can look in a mirror, look at a vacuum, or you can just do something, you know, you look at a favorite cartoon and copy a cartoonist style. But I'm just making the shapes of my arm, of my hand, and I'm vacuuming and I'm spraying cleaner around. 
I don't actually do that at the same time, but this gives a look of me doing a lot of cleaning. And yeah, it's tough to get that shape of the arm and the way it comes out and the shape of the hand. So I'm just going to keep, you know, drawing it and erasing it and redoing it till I get it sort of right, close enough. Now for this piece, I'm going to tear the scribble. Instead of cutting a shape, it's going to be more of a cloud. So I'm going to tear it and I'll just see, okay, is that fitting? Okay, no, I need to make that a little bit wider. Open that up a little bit more, put that in the corner. So it's like I'm spraying the, the cleaner and it's just battling away all that scribble anxiety. And you know, you feel better when you're cleaning the house and you're like, okay, this is going to be cleaner. And when it's cleaner, that's healthier, that's better for me. It's a nice way to contribute to the household. We all need to find ways to be useful, you know, especially if you're stuck at home with family members. Um, you want to do nice things for each other. So part of my job is to do the cleaning. And maybe I'm vacuuming up some cleaning. And yeah, I could try out different shapes like, okay, what if there's some kind of spiky marks? And that's kind of a, a method for showing emotion and action. Um, and I did the drawing in pencil, but now I want it to be in pen. I'm just using a ballpoint pen again here. You could use a better marker for this. But I'm just going to do it in ballpoint pen now that I've sketched it out the way I like. Go over those lines in the pen. And then I can erase the pencil marks. Clean that up a little bit. And then my head needs to be a little bit bigger, my hair a little bit darker. I'll redo some of that collage. Now I've got some scribble like vacuumed up into the, the vacuum cleaner cartridge. And yeah, a few more pieces and that's about it. And now when I finish artwork, what I like to do is you clean up around it so that you can look at the artwork and see what it looks like when it's done. There it is, nice. On a nice black background, I cleaned up everything around it so you could see it. You know, you don't want to stop making art and have a big mess. So I've done some experimenting with this cartooning approach. You know, and telling a story with my art. You know, so there's that question, how do we hold it all? And I put that little ball of, of scribble in there. And I also did a drawing of myself, drawing. I do a lot of a lot of art making, as you see. So there's a picture of myself doing some drawing. You know, I, I let it be imperfect. My shoulders are all messed up there, but that's fine. It's just, this is just for me. Um, I'm sharing it now, but, um, I did another piece. This was during a workshop with some teachers and everyone's in their little Zoom boxes there. Can barely tell that they're people, but you know, knowing we're all in this together. And this is a little piece I did where I'm kind of breaking through the scribbles. Um, so I pasted the scribble down and then just tore out the middle and drew myself in there. And I made it into a little gift too. So. There's all sorts of ways of making art and you can find, you know, gifts and memes. Those are fun ways. And I also experimented with doing this on, uh, this is acrylic on canvas and I used acrylic medium to glue my scribble onto the canvas and then acrylic paint. So acrylic medium is basically clear, clear acrylic paint, same as uh, Mod Podge. I also did a piece just on cardboard. This was the back of an old sketchbook. And I just used tape for this one. And I also used the front cover of the sketchbook and some paint and painted over the words and used the square that was already there. So that's just some abstract art. Another thing I did was um, I made this painting of a teddy bear and used scribbles just as a background. Uh, this is because some kids in my neighborhood are doing teddy bear hunts and they're putting teddy bears in the windows. I don't have any uh, stuffed teddy bears, so I did a painting to put in the window. So that's something for the community to do. I just like the way the scribble looks as background. So 
I'm finding a variety of ways of using these scribbles in the artwork. And I'd love to see what you can figure out to do with it. So please try this out, experiment with it. Maybe you make something just like what I made, or maybe you make something totally different. And I showed you doing it a cartoon style and storytelling scribbling. And I showed you something much more abstract scribbling. And you can imagine there's a lot of stuff in between that um, that you could use your scribbles for. So be creative, keep making art. Please show me your examples, send it to me. Um, you can tag me on social media at the art don't stop, or you can email it to me. I'll put my information in the description section. And thank you for joining me. Thanks to Arts Ed Matters for helping me make this video and keep making art. I'll see you next time.